everyone in today's video i want to talk to you about my experience with the byd edo 3 so far i've had my byd edo 3 for almost uh, two and a half months now and for those who are not aware i do have a tesla model 3 that i purchased almost uh, two years ago in december 2021 and i loved my tesla model 3 since the day i got it but uh, that doesn't change the fact that BYD is actually a pretty good car and I'll try to not compare those two cars and try to give you a honest review of my experience with my BYD at a three for uh, two and a half months. So uh, let's actually divide the experience in multiple sections. The first one would have to be the drive experience of BYD at a three. Now uh, coming from a sedan structured body, I do find the driving experience of the BYD Edo 3 uh, comfortable but saying that there's a couple of things which are not as great as uh, uh, Tesla Model 3 or if even if we don't have to compare to Tesla Model 3 there's a overall experience of driving in a BYD Edo 3 especially if you're driving it manually is actually pretty good and the best part about this car is since it is an EV so it still gets that uh, instant torque that the EVs are so famous for so all those boxes ticked makes the overall experience quite good now there are a couple of things which makes the driving experience overall not excellent and that would have to be the autopilot or auto steer system that byd have is not as refined as tesla so uh, it's not like i'm comparing it with tesla but since uh, firstly it's uh, quite annoying in the way it bings and bongs if even if you have your hands on the steering wheel it still warns you for not having attention on the road or not having enough pressure on the steering wheel which is quite annoying and i usually turn off the steering assist to evade that but i still use it uh, for cruise control and cruise control of this car is pretty good and uh, the other thing which is not great in this car is the tires are not good like uh, there's no other way to say it they're just not good at all apart from the name name's cool they call it batman tires but even if it rains just a bit, the amount of skid that you get from those tires is uh, funny in the sense that even if you're in normal mode, you don't even have to put it on sports. In normal mode, just push the car acceleration pedal a bit and you would hear the tires easily. It's borderline unsafe if you ask me. And I usually uh, my way of handling that is I put the car on eco and that reduces the amount of uh, it's the skid we get from the car but it doesn't make the thing right and i believe that's going to be one of the first things which i would change if i were to change anything i would change the tires as soon as i get the opportunity and overall driving experiences it's not as sporty there's obviously as it's it being an SUV, there's a slight body roll uh, it does have a bit bouncy ride on extreme freeways or countryside roads but I haven't got a chance to explore how bad it would be yet because I drive in a suburban environment or freeway which are well managed and so I don't have to face that uh, uh, wavy motion of like the suspension of BYD Edo 3. I felt it being softer in the first week but right now I feel that this is a bit more comfortable ride compared to my Tesla Model 3 and I actually do prefer the comfort of this car compared to the Tesla even if I'm going on a road trip less than I would say 300 kilometers around trip because more than that you have to rely on the charging network and that's going to be another point uh, later in the video but under that I prefer this car over Tesla especially if I'm uh, in the mood of driving the car so when talking about how comfortable the car is it's an SUV so it's a bit better in the sense that it does have more space at the back it's easy to put a child seat at the back and it's a hatchback or SUV style boot so you can put stuff straight away and you don't have to worry about the hunch that we have in Tesla Model 3 or any sedan for that matter and that actually helps in uh, the decision that if you want a SUV style then Tesla Model Y and BYD Auto 3 were the only options we were considering and this is this is a fantastic little SUV like there's an MG little SUV as well but this is way better and my experience with it so far have been nothing but brilliant apart from the first week where it was a bit more of an adjustment I've covered that in another video if you want to check it out please do so but after that it's that good of an experience as far as the comfort is concerned that 
I am genuinely confused at times that which car should I be taking out. And there's different scenarios which I prefer to take uh, either car on, which I maybe will cover in one of the next videos. But for the most parts, I don't feel uncomfortable taking this car out. In fact, the seat of this car is suited to my body structure maybe, or whatever be the reason, but I find the seating in this car to be way more comfortable. Although it doesn't have lumbar support like the Tesla does, but uh, I do feel genuinely less tired after driving for longer distances. Now the next bit about the experience of the BYD Auto 3 would be the charging of my car. And I do use the home charger when it comes to charging the BYD Auto 3. I've charged it on external networks like EV, which is one of the famous networks around where I am in uh, Brisbane, Australia. But I don't think BYD Auto 3 is meant to be a long highway cruiser because uh, the peak rate at which the car can charge is around 80 kilowatt per hour, which is uh, almost half compared to what the Tesla Model 3 standard range does. And the uh, other thing is the range prediction of the BYD Auto 3 is uh, way off compared to what it shows. It shows around 480 kilometers that it's gonna do in full charge. But after driving it for, although like I have never taken it on a long enough road trip to know the exact stretch it can do in one full charge, but I've captured the information for a week when I was uh, going through it and it was sort of giving around 320, 350 kilometers range. Mm -hmm. And that's a big deviation when you ask me from 480 predicted range. Well, in Tesla, it's, it says it's gonna give you for uh, 120 kilometers, but I never get less than 380 kilometers of range from my Tesla. And that's given the scenario that Tesla is two year old and it's been a while since we actually had the Tesla. It does have a bit of, I think, a reduction in the range because of battery degradation. I'm yet to see any range degradation in BYD Auto 3, but given the prediction meter is not as accurate. I don't expect them to show it here, but we would certainly feel it. But the fact that this car is way more comfortable, we are getting used to the tech it does have, especially the sunroof with the cover and the infotainment system where it does support Android Auto and uh, Apple CarPlay, which is missing in our Tesla. And then it brings me to the conversation of how the interior of the car feels like and the design of the car. Well, let's talk about the design of the car. Design is uh, quite subjective. And, and I didn't hate the car. That, that would be my statement for this car. It's nothing extraordinary. Like when you look at the Tesla, especially when we bought our Tesla, when I first drove it in 2000, I think 19, it was a car that people would turn around to look at. Like it, it defined the electric car. But uh, with BYD Auto 3, it does feel like just another little SUV on the road. Talking about the design of the car, I love the side structure of BYD Auto 3. It's not uh, too big, it just looks sleek and modern. The tire design is good as well. Tires are not, but uh, the tire design is cool. I quite like the back as well, including the Build Your Dreams badge. I don't hate it. Uh, I think the LED structure that this car does have is also pretty good. And I love the fact that you can actually use the key to open the boot. And there's plenty of space in the boot as well. And you can close the boot as well you can in fact use the key to switch off the car which is nice and you would be able to turn it back on and uh, i think the reason you turn it back on is because when the car is turned on it would give you your aircon functionality and you don't have to reach out to the app or go in the car to actually turn it on so these bunch of kids just asked me about how quick it goes and they literally asked me zero to 60 and i said around seven seconds I didn't realize they meant zero to 60 kilometer per hour but uh then I corrected it and then they're like, yeah, it's fast enough. Then like, I, not, not when you do have a Tesla with you. It doesn't feel quick, but it's way more comfortable. And that's the, I think, good selling point of this car. So yeah, that's my initial impression of my BYD Auto 3. I do actually think it, it could be actually one of the perfect cars if you are planning to get a car which is good on your uh, pocket as well as does have uh, decent features because uh, otherwise you would be buying a ICE car in such a price range. And to get an electric car for under 52 or after the tax rebates or discounts under 50,000, 
which does have all the features that BYD does. It is a unbeatable value for money, easy to run car, but only concern is how it would hold value, you know, like the resale value as, as well as uh, how BYD service would be. But uh, time will only tell all those things and I'm hoping it would be good. That was one of the concerns when we were buying the BYD, but since we got an amazing deal, it was like, you know, we'll see when we get there. But so far, I'm quite impressed. I would highly recommend you to go try one of the BYDs out if you're looking into any cars. And especially if you're looking to buy a Tesla, not for the brand of it, just because they have a reputation of good car. I think BYD would uh, surprise you how good they are to drive. And especially if you're not planning to use the Tesla Autopilot everywhere you go. Like I prefer to use Tesla Autopilot or the cruise control that it does have any opportunity that I get. And that's one of the reasons that I would never, I think, go away from the Tesla ecosystem. But otherwise, this is and has been a fantastic car. It does have decent range, charges fairly decently. And I've never got an opportunity to use the vehicle to load functionality. That's why I didn't mention it in my review. But uh, it's actually pretty nice and useful if you're going on a camping trip or if you plan to use some equipments which does need a normal socket. And the last thing which I almost forget is the infotainment screen as well as the interior lighting and other things. And I personally believe it is pretty nice to actually have some lights in the car finally because with the Tesla it's all dark interior and you cannot see anything at all if you're driving down the freeway because all the internal lights are either the norm lights which are like on uh, on the corner there and they are i think haptic touch as well which is quite nice but uh, with tesla you have either those or you have very small a very small uh, little indicator lights on the steering wheel which are good for nothing but they just tell you where the scroll wheels are which you would normally know so in the sense that it does have amazing interior lightning system although the interior could be a bit childish or funky but uh, i've actually got used to it and i don't notice all the weird uh, quirks that i thought it would have and it didn't bother me at all like initially i thought the guitar strings or the shape of the door opening mechanism or whatever would uh, bother me or including these uh, center console aircon shapes but they're actually functional they're quite nice they're phone charger is quite nice as well it does have decent pockets of space for storing your stuff like underneath the gear uh, lever as well as the normal uh, i think under arm rest support and that was not such a big deal for us because we knew that tesla does have a better interior space apart from the space underneath the gear lever because with tesla it's there but this one's a bit more useful but to run the Android Auto or uh, Apple CarPlay, it's, uh, we're actually running Apple CarPlay, which is wired. So it's not uh, as good as it would have been if it was wireless, because you can put your phone and you can use Apple CarPlay. That would have been perfect. But soon enough, I hope with the update, we can get that sorted. But otherwise, the interior is usable and quite nice. It does have uh, aircon at the back and you can turn it off and on from the back itself. You don't have to ask the driver or the passenger on the front seat to actually adjust the aircon like you have to do that in Teslas. But saying that, there's no two-zone climate adjustment in BYD. I was hoping it would have it, and it does show that uh, it does have. And when you actually open the aircon system, it does show two different things, but I don't think it's two-zone air climate. It's just that the passenger can adjust it, and so can you. The other good feature that it does have is the air purification mode where you can actually purify the air and it's not as great as the biohazard mode in Tesla Model Y and uh, the other Tesla systems, but it's good enough that at least it does have it. And there's uh, seat heating with this car, which we haven't used yet, so I've got no experience with it so far. But if you talk about infotainment, the speaker system is uh, great. It's better than what we expected it to be. The lightning, although is a bit funky, but it's good. You can calm it down by reducing the brightness and limiting it to one color or completely turn it off. So it does have that option. But saying all that, it's it's been a, I think, long video explaining different features and different things I've faced so far. But overall, my experience with BYD Level 3 have been nothing short of fantastic. 
and I almost forget one of the best features that I wish Tesla introduces quickly. 360 camera is just fantastic. And on that note, I'll end this video. And if you have any questions regarding the Idea 3 or Tesla Model 3, feel free to reach out in comments. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.